So this time I'm going to take a little detour that I hope some of you will follow me on. The thing is, is that I've got one foot in this kind of literary world and another foot in a geeky, techie kind of world. And there are two particular figures in this geek world that fascinate me. John Gruber and Merlin Mann, two giants in this uh, genre. I won't go into big detail here about them, but enough to say that they're eloquent, insightful, and have loads and loads and loads of dedicated fans. These are the kind of people that have more than 100,000 followers on Twitter. Uh, To give you an idea of the difference between me and them, I get on my website up to... 50 visits per day. John Gruber gets 500,000. In 2009, uh, John Gruber and Merlin Mann did a talk at South by Southwest. On paper, this talk was about how to make a successful blog. On paper, it seemed as if this was geared more towards geek-oriented folks. But I've listened to this talk at least a dozen times. I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to it. And this discussion was so much more giant to me than just geek blogging. John Gruber starts out suggesting that this talk was about the need to find Find your your obsession obsession and follow follow it. it. Deceptively simple sounding, but it's a pretty powerful idea. Merlin Mann later talks about it in terms of a formula. Obsession times voice. I think almost all of the best nonfiction that has ever been made comes from the result of somebody who can't stop thinking about a certain topic, a very specific aspect in some cases of a certain topic. And second, they got really good at figuring out what they had to say about it. Now I think it's too limiting to say that this is about nonfiction. It's not just about nonfiction. It's not just about blogging. It's not even just about writing. It seems like this is about any creative pursuit. As for my own writing, when I think about my better stories, or the novels that didn't end up in the trash can, or the presentations that didn't suck, it's because I totally obsessed over a subject, and then I found a way in, a way to tell about my obsession. It took me over 500 pages to find the voice in my current novel. I had a feeling that the story was big from the start, but I couldn't figure out how to tell the story, and the result was a dry and tedious draft. But when I found the voice, finally, it was like a giant spotlight shining on the story. Voice just is so important. All the charm, all the authority, all the wisdom seems to come from voice. A blog needs it, a memoir needs it, a story needs it, a book needs it, a painting needs it, a stupid video with shitty drawings need it. But then there's obsession. There are a lot of ways to think about what this means. It's the crazy path that you're following that no one else would be foolish enough to go down. It's the reason why I'm writing a ridiculous novel about an immigrant obsessed with the Joe Louis Max Schmeling fight and can't stop writing about this fight on napkins, and why you're obsessed about something else, just as crazy. Merlin Mann comes up with a totally geeky and totally fabulous way to talk about obsession times voice and action. Don't have a blog about Star Wars. Have a blog about Jawas. Or, uh, like, this one Jawa that's just in the scene for a minute. Like, it's going to be so much easier for you to dominate, first of all. You're going to become the go-to guy for that one Jawa. This talk about blogging actually convinced me not to blog. At least not a traditional blog. But this talk also convinced me to scribble presentations on the screen and talk about my neuroses and insights within the writing world. I didn't know anyone else vomiting on the screen the same way I wanted to do it, and so I did it. This talk goes in several other interesting directions that I thought I'd just mention a little bit about. It has some nice wisdom about walking into the unknown, the need to be comfortable in this world of uncertainty, which is something I talked about in my last I'm a Failed Writer presentation. This talk also helped me think about who I'm writing for when I write or create something. It's a slant on this concept of an ideal reader. But, you know, for me, the term ideal reader, it's a little too intimidating for me to think about. Merlin Mann said it differently. Who do I want to delight? It's such a nice way to put it. It helps me not freeze up from the formality of the ideal reader. It prevents me from taking myself too seriously. I'm not idealizing. I'm just delighting. It still keeps me shooting for a high standard, but I can also tell a few poop jokes along the way. 
Oh, and there's also so much charm to these two guys as they talk. Most days I don't wear pants. There's more to this talk, so give it a listen. I think their message is just as relevant to us folks working on an insane book that will never see the light of a geek blog as it is for geek bloggers. It's not about arrogance, but it is about having the confidence to know what you want to say and who you want to say it to. We want to help you do the shit out of that. Here's hoping that you do the shit out of whatever it is that you do.